Welcome back to SHOT Show TV. I'm your host, Trevor Santos, Director of Government Relations State Affairs with the National Shooting Sports Foundation. Joining me here today, Governor Tate Reeves from the great state of Mississippi. Governor, thanks for being here with us today. Well, thanks for having me, Trevor. It's a, a real honor and privilege to be here at SHOT Show. Well, this is, uh, this is your first SHOT Show. <laughs> You've had, the, had a chance to walk the floor a little bit and see some of what we have to offer. What are, what are your initial thoughts? Well, it's, it's been incredible. It really has. I, I really didn't know what I was uh, getting into other than I wanted to come. Uh, and it's just been incredible. I've been able to see uh, a large number of Mississippi-based companies and companies that are based in other places that do manufacturing in Mississippi. And I've also seen a number of Mississippians just walking the floor and enjoying themselves uh, because in our state, uh, we honor the Second Amendment. We, we, we love to hunt. We love to fish. In fact, uh, in our state, it's a constitutional right to be able to hunt and fish. Uh, as well it should be. Well, and I know going back to your time as Lieutenant Governor before you were elected in 2019, you were a staunch supporter of that constitutional right to hunt and fish. And, and I know you do a little bit of hunting and fishing yourself. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you know you can go uh, just, just a few miles each way and, and be in a deer stand or a duck blind. So talk a, a little bit about what Mississippi has to offer as far as the great outdoors. Well, the, the great outdoors are really important, not only to me personally and to my family, but it's really important to most everyone in Mississippi. And so uh, I live in the middle of downtown in the largest city in the state. And I can literally go 40 or 50 miles to my west and be in a deer stand. I can go 30 or 40 miles uh, to my northwest and, and be in a great deer hole, excuse me, duck hole. Uh, I also, uh, because we do have the, the waterfront on the Gulf of Mexico, I just a couple of months ago was out with some buddies uh, doing a little red fishing and, and some, uh, we call some speckled trouts as well, uh, speckled trout as well. And so what, a, what an opportunity. We talk about quality of life and it's places like Mississippi where you have quality of life and the great outdoors matters with respect to that. And the other thing that I will tell you is we also understand the importance of not only having that for, um, for the governor and for others, but for everybody. And so we passed legislation last year uh, to create the Mississippi Stewardship Fund, transferring $20 million a year to make sure that we properly take uh, care of our state public lands so that everyone in the state can have an opportunity to hunt and fish just like, just like we do. Well, and that's significant, and uh, the National Shooting Sports Foundation was proud to be a supporter of that legislation as it worked its way through the legislature. Uh, you know, those public-private partnerships are, are crucial to ensuring that we have access and we have those opportunities to hunt, shoot, and fish uh, for future generations. Well, we, we want every single kid in, in Mississippi, uh, regardless of what their mom and dad do for a living, to have the opportunity to enjoy the great outdoors and we all know that, that uh, on private lands, it's getting more and more expensive. Um, uh, land is a natural hedge against inflation, and with inflation where it is today, the prices are going up and up and up. And so it's, in, it's really important that we have uh, public access on public lands, and Mississippi is one of those states that has historically done a good job on conservation. Uh, but now with this uh, guaranteed uh, transfer of money on an annual basis, we're able to do so much more, not only leveraging federal resources, but utilizing state resources as well. And it, as you mentioned, it was a huge coalition, both in the state and out of the state, that helped us get that bill across the finish line. Well, and again, we were proud to support that. Now, I know we're talking, you know, hunting, fishing, conservation in Mississippi, but I ran into one of your former colleagues during your lieutenant governor days, uh, Carlos Lopez Quintero <laughs> from, from Florida, and, and he told me that I had to ask you about a hog hunting story uh, several years ago when you made it down his way? Well, the first thing I would tell you is don't always believe everything Carlos tells you, uh, particularly when it comes to hunting. Um, you know, the, well, a lot of us have, have heard about the big fib when it comes to hunting and fishing, right? And uh, I'm not accusing Carlos of anything, but no, Carlos and I served as lieutenant governors together for a number of years. And, and I just remember thinking, I got a call from him one day and he said, hey, we're going to be uh, basically uh, there in Orlando and I'm gonna take some guys out and we're gonna go hog hunting at night and I thought in Orlando and so we ended up driving 30 40 50 minutes I don't remember how long um, and it was uh, an incredible experience we had a great time but we were literally walking through the swamp um, with water basically up to uh, mid thigh uh, in the middle of the night and um, but it was awesome we had such a good time um, I think everyone with us had a blast, and, and I know Carlos and I did. I joked with him 
that the only reason he asked me because he knew I was the one that was crazy enough to say yes. <laughs> well, there's there's no shortage of hogs in Florida and certainly not in Mississippi. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of policy issues that come and go. I know the state of Mississippi several years ago passed constitutional carry. Um, but at times, you are being blamed. The state of Mississippi and Governor Tate Reeves is being blamed for crime that's happening, you know, in other places in, in the country. Uh, the mayor of Chicago recently came out and, and blamed the state of Mississippi, Mississippi for, for crime that was happening there. And I know you and, and the legislature have done things to hold criminals accountable. Well, that's exactly right. And, and you know, Mississippi has been a leader for years. Certainly my 11 years as Lieutenant Governor and Governor and working in the policy side of things has been a leader when it comes to protecting our Second Amendment. Uh, we believe very strongly in our state that, that guns don't commit crimes, criminals commit crimes. And, th and there was a, an instance a year or so ago when the mayor of Chicago tried to blame the state of Mississippi. Now you don't have to be a geography major to recognize that we really aren't that close uh, to, to the city of Chicago and the fact that that's one of the murder capitals of the world. Um, I, I guess she couldn't blame herself, so she wanted to blame someone. But the reality is uh, that we are going to support our law enforcement. Uh, we are going to have laws on the books that when, when those who commit crimes, we're going to find them and we're going to arrest them and we're going to put them away for a long, long time. Uh, and that's just the way we look at it. And we look at firearms, we look at weapons, we look at guns as an opportunity for law-abiding citizens to protect themselves against that criminal element. And that's the, the way we focus on things and the vast majority of Mississippians agree with that. Well, and, and I commend you on that and the industry commends you. The last thing the firearm industry wants to see is its lawful products being misused. And we feel strongly that those who are misusing these products need to be held accountable. So no we're question. glad to hear that, that you and, and the state of Mississippi are doing that uh, while others are uh, you know, blaming others, uh, the industry and, and other states for, for that crime. Well, they want to they wanna blame everything besides the real culprit. And they want to blame the industry. They want to blame other states. They want to blame other public policy in other states when the real culprit is the way in which they've chosen to police. And, and that's just, that's a fact. And I, I don't mean to hurt anyone's feelings, but um, again, you don't have to be a, a political expert to figure out that in large cities across America today, uh, where they are defunding the police, they are reducing their total police population, they're not supporting their police even when they have them, um, they have major, major problems. And, and, you know, in our state, just to give you an example, we've got some of those same challenges in the city of Jackson. So we created a capital complex improvement district where the state now has its own police force, not unlike the District of Columbia did a number of years ago. Uh, we've increased the number of police in that district from 60 on June 1 to 120 today. And that's because we believe uh, that we're going to support our police and, and we've had, a, we've had a, a reduction in crime because of it, because police presence works. Absolutely, and I know we've got a lot, lot of law enforcement here in this building and uh, they, they would thank you for the positions you've taken. You know, we're, we're proud of our industry. We're proud of this show we put on here. We're proud of our industry in the state of Mississippi. And, and I know you're out here meeting with companies to uh, hopefully have recruit them and have them relocate to Mississippi. You know, what would you tell those companies that are here that are currently located in gun fr unfriendly territory? Well, and, and look, the, there are many companies that are in this industry that have been located in the same place for many, many years. And I understand that it's hard to make that ultimate decision to leave, to relocate. Uh, I get it, it really is. But in some of these states, uh, some of these companies really have no choice uh, because the, the radical policies from the other side uh, are making it virtually impossible for them to operate. And so what I would say about Mississippi is quality of life. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to go very far to be able to hunt, to be able to fish. Uh, to be able to do the kind of things that those of us who love the outdoors uh, are able to do. The second thing I would say is the quality of our workforce. Um, we have worked very hard by creating an Office of Workforce Development that I have worked very closely on every single day, which is training our people for the jobs of the next 50 years. Uh, we believe in manufacturing in Mississippi. We have proven that. Uh, a lot of states have moved away not only from this industry, but have moved away from manufacturing in general. Not only do we, um, not only are we manufacturing state, uh, we embrace it. 
and, and look, the, the fact is, not only is it a quality workforce, if companies located in Mississippi in the, in the firearms industry or anything similar, they're going to have a workforce that believes in the product. And when you believe in the product and you're proud of the product that you're making, you tend to show up to work and you tend to work hard uh, and you tend to produce a better product. And so you have less quality issues in the product itself. And so, um, and, and then finally, I would just simply say that uh, Mississippi is a place, a good place to do business. And, you know, one of the things that we've seen over the last few years is we live in a litigious society. There are a lot of litigators. There's a lot of litigation. There's a lot of lawyers, and they like to sue. Well, in our state, we took on uh, that industry uh, that was suing companies, and we won. And we made it a uh, much more business-friendly environment in Mississippi over the last 20 years, and we're proud of that fact. Uh, and we'll continue to fight uh, not only for the Second Amendment, but we're going to continue to fight to have a business-friendly environment that protects our companies and recognizes the importance of keeping the trial lawyers away from them. That, that's great. I, I love to hear that. And I want to thank you again for being here. I want to thank you for your leadership. Y'all heard it here from Governor of Mississippi, Governor Tate Reeves. Mississippi is open for business. They would welcome you all in the state of Mississippi. I'm your host, Trevor Santos, with the National Shooting Sports Foundation. We'll see you next time on SHOT Show TV.